In this video, we're going to talk about the incenter of a triangle, the centroid, the orthocenter, and the circumcenter of a triangle. So let's start with a picture. So let's call this A, B, and C. How can we identify the incenter of this triangle? What would you say? The incenter is always inside of the triangle. And you could find it by the intersection of the three angle bisectors. So let's draw an angle bisector of angle A. It should look something like that. Or maybe more like this. And then draw the angle bisector of C and do the same thing for B. They should intersect at the middle. So these two angles must be congruent those two angles have to be congruent to each other and these two must be congruent. So the point of intersection is known as the end center. Now if you draw a circle that's inscribed of the triangle, the end center is the center of that circle. Now granted my drawing is not perfect but if you do it perfectly the incenter should be the center of the inscribed circle. So let's talk about the centroid of a triangle. How can we identify the location of the centroid? The centroid can be found by the intersection of the three medians of a triangle. So let's identify the midpoint of each side. and then draw a line from the vertex to the midpoint of the other side. So the centroid is approximately in that region. So like the incenter, the centroid always lies inside of the triangle. Let's call this point D, E, and F. Let's call this point P. Now, it turns out that AP is 2 thirds of AE. And PE is 1 third of AE. And AP is twice the value of PE. So let's say if PE is 5, AP is 10. If FP is 4, PC is twice the value, it's 8. If BP is 12, PD is half the value, it's 6. Now the total length of AE, 10 plus 5, that's 15. We can see that AP is 2 thirds of 15. 2 thirds of 15 is 10. PE is 1 third of 15. 1 third of 15 is 5. And so Anytime you have a centroid, the long side or the long segment will be twice the value of the short segment. So to review, the centroid inside a triangle can be identified by the intersection of the three medians. So if AE is a median, that means E is the midpoint of BC, which means that BE and EC are congruent. Now, BD is the median to AC, so D is the midpoint of AC, so AD and DC have to be congruent. F is the midpoint of AB since FC is the median, so FB and AF are congruent. And so that's it for a centroid. Let's move on to our next topic. So let's focus on identifying the orthocenter of a triangle. Now the orthocenter doesn't have to lie inside of the triangle. It could be on the triangle or outside of the triangle. Now if we have an acute triangle like this particular example, it's going to lie inside of the acute triangle. If we have a right triangle, it lies on the right triangle. And if we have an obtuse triangle, it's going to lie outside of the obtuse triangle. 
Now the location of the orthocenter can be found by the intersection of the three altitudes. So let's draw an altitude from vertex A to the opposite side, side BC. So we need to draw in such a way that it's perpendicular to the opposite side, which is probably going to be around here. It looks perpendicular at that point. And then do the same for vertex C. So around there it should be perpendicular. And then let's draw a line from B to AC. So as we can see, the orthocenter is approximately somewhere in this region. So if you have an acute triangle, the orthocenter lies inside of the acute triangle. Now let's focus on a right triangle. Let's identify the location of the orthocenter. So first, let's extend each side. So I'm going to extend side BC, side AB, and also AC. I probably don't need to do that, but I'm going to do it anyway. So what we need to do is draw an altitude from vertex A to BC. And notice that the altitude is here, because that's where it meets BC at a right angle. So this is the altitude from vertex A to BC. Now let's draw the altitude from vertex C to side AB. So that's going to be here, because it's perpendicular to side AB. Now let's draw the altitude from vertex B to AC. So that's going to be, actually let's do that again. It should be like this. Okay, this is approximately a right angle. It's not exactly 90, but it's close to it. Either case, you could see that this is the location of the orthocenter. The orthocenter is located at the right angle of a right triangle. So let's say if this is the right triangle. The orthocenter will be located at the right angle. Or if we have another right triangle that looks like this, the orthocenter is going to be located right there. And so that's how you can identify the orthocenter of a right triangle. It's always located on the right triangle at the right angle. Now, what if we have an obtuse triangle? So let's call this A, B, and C. So I'm going to extend each side. This is BC. And here we have AB. And let's extend AC. Let me do that again. So let's draw the altitude starting from vertex B to the opposite side. AC. And I'm going to do it in blue. So this is the right angle. And then let's draw the altitude from vertex A to side BC. So remember, it has to be perpendicular. So notice that it's perpendicular at BC at this point. If you draw it here, this is not going to be a 90 degree angle. So for an obtuse triangle, we could see that the orthocenter is going to lie outside of the obtuse triangle. Now let's draw the third line, and it's going to be from vertex C perpendicular to AB. And so we can see here it's approximately 90 degrees. And so they intersect at that region. So that's the orthocenter of an obtuse triangle. An obtuse triangle is a triangle that has one angle that's a greater than 90. 
So this angle is more than 90. It could be like maybe 110. That makes it an obtuse triangle. So now you know how to identify an orthocenter. It's the location where all three altitudes of a triangle intersect. Now there's one more term that we need to go over, and that is the circumcenter. So how can we identify the location of the circumcenter? Let's call this triangle ABC. The circumcenter can be identified from the intersection of the three perpendicular bisectors of the three sides of a triangle. And it's very similar to the orthocenter in that it doesn't always have to lie on the inside of the triangle. Now, if you have an acute triangle, the circumcenter is going to lie on the inside of the acute triangle. If you have a right triangle, it lies on the right triangle. And if you have an obtuse triangle, it will be located outside of the obtuse triangle. So first, let's identify the midpoint of each side. A perpendicular bisector is basically the combination of an altitude and a median. It has properties of both. So the perpendicular bisector for AC would be here. It doesn't have to touch vertex B, even though it may look like it's going to touch it. But however, these two sides must be congruent because this point has to be the midpoint. And also, the two lines have to be perpendicular to each other. So let's draw something that's perpendicular to this side. Okay, that's approximately perpendicular to it. And these two sides are congruent. And that's approximately perpendicular to this side. So we can see that the circumcenter is located on the inside of an acute triangle. Now let's draw a circle. Okay, that circle wasn't looking good. So notice that the circumcenter is the center of a circle that is circumscribed about the triangle. The in center of a triangle is the center of a circle that is inscribed of a triangle. So hopefully you see the difference between a circumcenter and an incenter. So just to recap, the circumcenter of a triangle is the center of the circle when the circle is circumscribed about the triangle. And the incenter of a triangle is the center of the circle when the circle is inscribed or inside of the triangle. So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's move on to our next example, and that is the right triangle. So where is the circumcenter of the right triangle? So let's identify the three midpoints. And then draw a perpendicular line to each, to each uh, midpoint. So we have a perpendicular bisector. So as you can see, the circumcenter lies on the right triangle. In fact, it's at the midpoint of the hypotenuse. So this line is perpendicular to AB. And this is the perpendicular bisector of BC. And here we have the perpendicular bisector of AC. So remember that the circumcenter can be found by the intersection of the three perpendicular bisectors. Now let's draw the circle. So as we can see, the circumcenter lies on the center of the circle that's circumscribed about the right triangle. Now let's move on to our next example. 
and that is the obtuse triangle. So this is A, B, and C. And so first, let's identify the midpoint of each side. And then let's draw the perpendicular bisectors of those midpoints. Actually, that shouldn't be there. So we can see this is the right angle. This is a right angle, and that's a right angle. And then this point is the midpoint of AB. These two sides are congruent, and those two sides are congruent. So notice that the circumcenter lies outside of the obtuse triangle. Now let's draw the circle. It should be uh, something like that. But as you can see, my circles is not perfect, but if it was, you can see that this should be the center of the circle that's circumscribed about triangle ABC. So now let's review what we've learned so far. The in center of a triangle can be found by the intersection of the three angle bisectors. Next, we talked about the centroid. The centroid can be found by the intersection of the three medians of a triangle. And if you wish to find the orthocenter, you can do so by finding where the three altitudes meet. And finally, to identify the location of the circumcenter, you need to draw the three perpendicular bisectors. So hopefully that gave you a good review. And so now you know how to identify the in center of a triangle, the centroid, the orthocenter, and the circumcenter. So thanks again for watching.